scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you now about that time this is the persecution of the church herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex Saturn of the church verse 2 and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Three. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Can you imagine how wicked a leader this man was? That he did something wrong, but because others were happy, he was about to do it again. It's amazing how people will derive joy in the destruction of a family, in the destruction of children, in the destruction of a destiny. The Bible says, because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further evil can go further he proceeded further to take peter also if the devil touches your finance and you keep quiet he will go further to your health if he touches your firstborn and you keep quiet he will go further to touch the second child if he touches your education and you keep quiet he will go further to touch your wife satan can go further he went further to take peter also then were the days of the unliving bread, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers. Can you imagine that? To keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. The man was using another man's situation to make a name. He wanted to be seen as Herod the Great and Herod the Good. And so he inquired the desire of the people. And it did not matter whether the desire affected Peter or affected the church. He wanted to use the church to make a name for himself in government. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Hallelujah. Let's read the remaining part. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Be patient with me and let's continue. Six. Very interesting. The Bible says, when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, the same night, when you pray, God does not delay. The same night. It says, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains. And look at this kind of oppression. You are in prison. It's another tragedy. You are between soldiers. Then you are bound with chains and they are kept at the door. Did Isaiah the prophet not say there are people like that? Physically, they are moving, but spiritually, this is their condition. The only thing moving forward in their life is their age. Nothing else is moving. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Please give us the other verse. It says, verse 7 now. Be patient. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in prison. And he smote Peter by the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains, and his chains, talk to me, and his chains fell off his hands. That means some chains remain only because God has not come. When the, the angel did not say chain fall. The very presence of God can end certain circles. Next verse, please. 
The angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Now look at something interesting, verse 9. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought it was in a vision. Keep that scripture there. Did the Bible not say when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, that it shall be like a dream? Even Peter, Peter was wondering what kind of deliverance is this? He thought he was still in a vision. You know, there are dreams that you dream is till you wake up before you know it's a dream. This is how God will surprise someone in this church this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. That even when you stand to testify, you will ask people, I, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Verse 10. This is the verse I want us to see. Let's read it together. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the what? Stop. The Bible would have just said they came to the gate. But this very gate was made of iron. Is it in your Bible that he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder? They came to the iron gate that leaded to the city. They came to the gate that leaded to prosperity. They came to the gate that leaded to speed. But it was an iron gate that closed it. That you are out of the prison does not mean you are safe. There is still an iron gate waiting. He escaped the first gate. Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking prophetically. The first gate opened. The second gate opened. But the two of the gates were only leading to the iron gate. Not yet the city. When he got to the gates that lead to the city. The Bible says it opened to them on its own accord. And they went out and passed through on the street. And forthwith the angel departed. You are out of prison, but it doesn't mean you are safe. There are many gates. Are we together? You are out of the hospital does not mean the attack has stopped. You won the court case does not mean the demonic oppression has gone. You can pass the first gate. God is speaking to someone. The second gate, but there is a gate that is called the iron gate. And my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass. That gate is not only open, it is broken. So that your children can also pass. You see, there are gates if you pass alone. The, the trap, when the devil traps your children, your loved ones, you are still not free. There are gates that should not be open. They should be broken. Patterns that should be broken. People rise up and get to certain height and come down before everybody. And you get to a point where you say, I'm not only going to escape, I must break that gate. He has broken the iron gate. Opened on his own. And said, now you can go to the city. Warfare and intercession. James chapter 5 and verse 13. Is any man afflicted? The Bible says, let him pray. Let him pray. Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. What is affliction? A disturbance to your peace. An affliction is a disturbance to your peace. It can come as sickness. It can come as bad news. It can come as an orchestration of darkness. Remember the Bible says our warfare is not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers of the dark kingdom and spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenlies. They only use men as puppets. But the real stage for evil is in the heavenlies. Are we together? So we must pray. We must pray. The devil is stubborn. You give him room, he will wreck your life to pieces. He will start as if he's joking until he shreds your life completely. But someone in this church this night will be angry enough to say, Satan, no more. I gave you room 2015. I gave you room 2016. But this year, 2020, is a new circle. I'm determined to stay. You know one thing God tells us about Satan? He has a weakness. When Satan is resisted long enough, he flees. The Bible says it. He tempted Jesus. Temptation number one, number two, number three, he left him. You can weary Satan to leave you. Resist the devil 
and he will flee hallelujah warfare and intercession now many believers do not believe that there is a warfare dimension to the work of the saints in as much as i understand that here and there people have exaggerated the concept of spiritual warfare and demons and manipulations and curses and all of these things uh we have also made the mistake of swinging to the other side of the pendulum to just add that there is no such thing as that i i i i want to submit to you that demons are real i want to submit to you that yokes are real causes are real i want to submit to you that tragedies can be programmed it was the psalmist that says thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted in noonday these things are very real the challenge with many people is they came from families where the sacrifices of their parents immune them from seeing the full gravity if you don't see evil in your life someone's intercession is covering you while you grow but don't take it for granted because you will be exposed to a rude shock if you do not build your spiritual life. There are people who have never begged for bread. They don't know what delay is because the sacrifice of mother and father and uncles, their parents entered covenants with God that made him to vow to bless them. So when they hear things like oppression, they've not captured that reality in their experience. So sometimes they can express sarcasm. But let me tell you sincerely, even Jesus was about to give up at Gethsemane because of the, the, the onslaught of hell upon him. Demons are real. Devils are real. They can destroy destinies into pieces. Hallelujah. There are spirits that operate in families. They do not operate until you get to certain levels of achievement. Once you are poor and broke, it will look like they are dead. Be promoted and you will see that they've been there. The devil can be patient for 30 years, waiting till you become a director. Then it will now happen like it happened to your brother. Someone shout, no way. Hey. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, evil is real. Find a way of convincing yourself that a man vows to bless you and says i will give you a job and the devil seizes his memory and he no longer remembers you was it not the wine presser that forget forgot joseph how could you forget a man that was so nice to you there are demons that erode they capture the minds of people your breakthrough is in someone's table now but there is a spirit stopping it believe what i share with you it is true there are people anointed by God, but these spirits will never allow their voice to go global. They will never cross certain shores. They write books. They are great people. You listen to their messages and it's amazing. But any attempts to cross beyond certain thresholds, they bring them down. There are families like that. First class, first born. First class, second born. First class, third born. And the highest person among them earns 30,000 a salary. Something is wrong. The Bible says, and the God of peace will give you peace always by all means. Peace means a state of rest. Nothing missing, nothing broken. A state of completion. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. Your peace is a definition of your completeness. If it is not complete, do not rest. We only rest when we get to the seventh day. When you rest on day two, you are wrong. It's only on the seventh day that we rest. When all things are in place. Is God speaking to us? There is a warfare dimension to every believer. Jesus and the apostles did not leave us in the dark. As to the fact that we are not alone in the earth. The Bible says while men sleep, there are certain people that can come and sow seeds. You can go to bed in peace and wake up with all kinds of troubles waiting for you. Hallelujah. I once had the story of a, a gentleman, true story, the only son and only child of his mother. I think the, the gentleman just graduated and he went to collect his certificate and he was on his way to go and rejoice when a big truck 
just went and smashed the way he died is what made it bad not that he died he smashed and literally smashed the call the skull of that child when the mother heard you can imagine i don't even know whether the mother is alive or not you know we see these things and we say ah, a truck just made mistakes until you know how long it took the devil to plan that tragedy was it not in your bible that her man was planning to annihilate the jews and he consulted with mediums and they found december 13th to be the date that they will strike there are people who are appointed unto death a date has been fixed they are working on earth but in the realm of the spirit they are finished but someone will be angry this night and say lord no way i cannot allow this happen to me i cannot allow this happen to my children I think we can stop here for this night so that we'll pray we'll continue tomorrow but we need to use the remaining 10 minutes or so that i have for us to pray seriously please rise up on your feet i'd like you to hold hands with someone just pair yourselves into two if you can two two if you can we are going to pray hallelujah please say after me everyone in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus i come by the blood of the lamb and i declare every mark upon my life upon my family for evil i wipe it now and forever lift your voice and pray everything upon my life for evil the programmings of tragedy upon my life is someone praying for evil in the name of jesus put your children in the prayer put your job in the prayer put your influence in the prayer i declare by the god of the heavens every programming upon my heavens making for tragedy lift your voice and pray every programming of darkness upon my life in the name of jesus i come against it by the power of the holy ghost i declare i prophesy i decree i prophesy on this 20th day i make decrees by the spirit you shall not prevail you shall not stand you shall not prevail hallelujah in jesus name in jesus name first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 we are still praying something is shifting in the spirit first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 let's read it together please and samuel said unto the people it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron and brought your fathers up out of the land of egypt keep that scripture there it is god that advances men samuel said it is god that advanced moses and aaron it takes more than desire to move forward peter wanted to go out of the prison but the chains held him the bible says it is the lord that means if a man moves forward oh and vetoes his background it is the lord say in the name of jesus oh god arise and move my destiny forward and move my children forward lift your voice and pray arise almighty god the advancer of men the advancer of career the advancer of health the advancer in ministry i decree by the spirit of grace i decree by the spirit of faith i decree by the power of the holy ghost it is the lord that made moses and Aaron to advance it is the Lord 
that makes New Heritage Baptist Church to advance. It is the Lord that makes every youth in this church to advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we still here? Exodus chapter 14, please, and verse 14. Next prayer point. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14. This is a prophetic word for someone this year. That the Lord will fight for you. And you will hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, the Lord is saying to New Heritage Baptist Church, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. It's a command, it's a prophetic word that they go forward financially, they go forward spiritually. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Even in old age, the Bible says they shall be fat and flourishing. Is someone praying seriously? Is someone praying seriously? I move forward. I move forward. Academically, I move forward. Someone is praying. I move forward in my career. No more delay. No more stagnation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're almost done. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Next prayer point. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Let's read together. Anybody who believes, want to read. And I will restore unto you the years that the, can the canker worm. Please keep that scripture there. Once upon a time, the Bible says the sons of the prophet, Elisha was mentoring them. And they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us move to the other side. And while they were felling the trees to make a greater place, the Bible says the axe head fell. And he cried and said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. That means I'm in trouble. And the prophet said, where fell it? And he threw a stick. You're going to cry. Lord, I've lost things. I've lost time. I've lost relationships. I've lost money. But in 2020, restore years. Someone is praying, restore years. Restore finances. Restore reputation. Restore integrity. Restore jobs. Please be serious. Pray, pray, pray. Restore, oh God of heaven. Oh God of New Heritage Baptist Church. Restore, 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 restore. Someone is crying. Someone is angry. Restore. Lord, I would have been a PhD holder now, but I was sick for five years. Restore. Lord, I would have had five children now, but I'm just getting married. Restore. Lord, I would have been a manager now, but I'm just getting my first job now. I finished school 15 years ago, but I'm just getting the first job. Lord, restore. I don't just want to move forward. Restore time. Restore opportunities.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus never forget the mystery I want to show you now next prayer point 2nd Samuel chapter 9 2nd Samuel chapter 9 in the name of Jesus verse 1 and David said is there any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness there are men that can show kindness to men are we together for Jonathan's sake verse 2 and there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba and they called him unto David and the king said to him art thou Ziba and he said thy servant is he it's a long reading and the king said is there not yet any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and Ziba said unto the king uh, Jonathan had yet a son but that son is what lame incapacitated next verse 4 and the king said where is he and Ziba said unto the king behold he is in the house of Machir the house of Amiel in Lodabar 5 the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir and the son of Amiel of Lodabar verse 6 it says now when Mephibosheth the son of Jonathan and of Saul was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. Verse 7. It says, And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show you kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will what? Let me show you how God restores. God restores using men. I will restore unto thee all the land of Saul thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually verse 8 and he bowed himself and said what is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog a man is there condemning himself and yet the favor of god refuses to leave him verse 9 and the king called ziba saul's servant and said unto him i have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto saul and to his house 10 thou therefore please look at this he's talking to Ziba now thou therefore and thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat but Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table the last sentence is very scary read with me now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants and yet the king did not look at one of his sons a man has 15 sons 20 servants and yet he was sent to use the servant to serve a lame man father who must favor me this year there is always a man that God will program to lift you say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the helpers of my destiny appear now lift your voice and pray financial helpers spiritual helpers someone is praying Lagos is too blessed for you to be poor Lagos is too enlightened for you to be stranded where are they oh God I come before you like Mephibosheth the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Show me kindness. Show my family mercy. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Prophesy. In the name of Jesus, prophesy. This is how God restores. 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 He will send men. I will restore the years. I will restore the fortunes of Zion.
Hallelujah. The last prayer point, and we're done for tonight. Genesis 19. Genesis chapter 19. Now, I'll just give us the background and then we'll rush to the verse that... Um, this is a very interesting scripture because two angels, Sodom and Gomorrah, is about to be judged. Are we together? Just, just to put things in perspective. And then the Bible says that two angels came to meet Lot for the sake of Abraham so that they rescue him out because they were about to judge the land because of the perverseness in the land. And then the Bible says that the angels brought the message and they were to leave. But Lot beckoned on them and said, please stay. Do we get the story now? And then Lot decided to accommodate the angel. But because of the depravity in the hearts of the people, when they saw the angels, they came to knock the door and they told Lot, where are those two men in? He said, bring them out so that we'll lay with them. And Lord said, no, 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 don't do this kind of abomination. These are messengers from God. Lord even went as far as saying, take my daughters, do with them as you please. But the people said, no, it is these people we want. Please go to verse 9. We're reading 9 to 11. For time's sake, Genesis 19, 9 to 11. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will need to be a judge now. Uh, will we deal what's with me and so on and so on. And they pressed the more upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. The people were insisting that, you know, they must have their way with all these angels. Verse 10. And the men put forth their hand and put Lot into the house to them and shut the door. The angels now, the angels were angry. And then the Bible says, and the angel smote the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. When you are blind, you can be close to a door and yet not know where the handle is to open it. Are we together now? The Bible says these people were already at the door. There are people who are close to their blessings, but because the eyes to see it is not there, they can be gallivanting around your promise. You can even be in the street where your blessing is, but it takes God to open your eyes to see. How many properties have you passed that were destined to be yours? But if God does not open your eyes, you will not see it. You may have passed your office many times. The last prayer point. Lord, every veil upon my eyes that stops me from seeing what you are releasing and where you are taking me. In the name of Jesus and tonight, let the veil be torn. Let the blindness go. Let my eyes, the miracle of open eyes, lift your voice and pray to see the business that will bless me in the land to see the relationship that will lead that will lift me in the land lift your voice and pray please the god of this world blinds the minds of people they were at the door but the door could not open they were at the door, but they did not know how to open it. You've gone for the training, but you do not know how to convert it into a business that will bless you. Open my eyes. Some of you are new to this church. Lord, open my eyes. Is this the church you are anointing for me in this season? You have brought me here to bless me. Lord, this could be the place, and yes it is, that you want me to be part of this family because my destiny is connected here. Lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. I'm done every business that someone is profiting from today someone saw it before but they did not understand it it's amazing how you can look and yet not see praise the lord 
there are people who have found themselves in areas where their empowerment their graces is not there and all that god would open their eyes to see there are people today who their honor is in ministry but they are doing something else there are people who are not in ministry but because all their friends are in ministry they decided to join whereas their destiny is in education or management we need the miracle of open eyes that a man's eyes can be open so that you don't waste your time you see circumspect you are able to see to know that lord this is what you want me to do one of the miracles of open eyes is also to know when seasons end you can use the jawbone to kill an ass but after the after i mean after the the, the philistines are dead you will not need to use the bone again so you need to know when to drop the bone and use another weapon the miracle of open eyes father we thank you for the time to pray we know that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous avails much we have spent time to travel and in the name of jesus i pray and declare over everyone here return into a realm of strange testimonies in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus amen please let me plead that tomorrow whilst you come by the grace of god i'll still be here tomorrow please invite i want to share with you something and we'll pray invite everybody you know please don't come alone come with your family members come with i saw that there's a provision for overflows outside so there's no problem at all hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.